live from Bahrain, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS Summit Bahrain. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage here in Bahrain for the exclusive coverage of AWS's summit and their announcement and their execution of a new region which should be online here in early 2019. I'm John Furrier, your host with SiliconANGLE Media the Cube, extracting the signal from the noise, meeting all the people. First time in the Middle East, in the region, should be a big impact having a digital footprint the size of Amazon Web Services, bringing energy and entrepreneurship and innovation and economic revitalization and enablement. We love the coverage, we're meeting a lot of great people. Our next guest is Simon Martin, who's the ambassador of the British Embassy here in Bahrain. Hi. Simon, welcome to theCUBE, thanks for Hi, joining John. us. So, okay, so I want, I want to just kind of get your perspective. I met the U.S. ambassador yesterday, last night at dinner. Yeah. He's kind of new uh, to the area, in the job. But he's, You've already, got experience. he's already well informed, I can tell he's you. He's well informed, <laughs> <laughs> birth by fire, thrown in the deep end. Um, mm. You've been here for a few years. Yeah, three. Take a minute to talk about the environment here, because yeah. we're first time here, we're learning, we're observing. I'm certainly surprised. Mm. My daughter was asking me, you know, what are the women like there? We had a women's breakfast yesterday, 70 plus people. Mm the energy, the diversity, interesting culture, feels very, like very open. What's your thoughts? Well, very much so. Um, I mean, ba uh, Bahrain has been at the sort of crossroads of international travel for hundreds and hundreds of years. Uh, the UK's relationship with Bahrain, the formal one goes back just over 200, uh, and that was all to do with trade. Uh, Manama means the place of sleep. Uh, and it was a place that people used to stop to rest on their way across the Arabian subcontinent and towards the Indian subcontinent and so on. So it's a place which is uh, naturally welcoming uh, of foreigners and outside ideas. And I think that's what Amazon uh, have found here. Uh, so there is an awful lot of change going on uh, in this part of the world. Bahrain is a relatively small economy compared to its neighbors. Uh, it was the place that oil was first discovered in, in the Gulf but actually once they discovered it, they realized actually they had rather less than most of the neighbors. And therefore, it's an economy which has had to, to adapt uh, to keep, keep growing uh, in contrast. Mainly, mainly the dependence on oil, other oil rich areas. Yeah. Right, is that? Yeah, so that's been the mainstay uh, of the economy for some time, but uh, there is not the, there's not yet the potential for, uh, for the growth that's needed in, in order to help develop an economy with its uh, with the necessary modern infrastructure, uh, a growing population, the need for, uh, for quality employment for young people, which is something that we've heard a lot of in, in the last few years. Talk about your history. How mm. long have you been in the job you're in? And what's the background? What are some of the things that you've done mm. okay, uh, well, in the uh, government, in the UK? Yeah, well, thank you. Um, so I've been here for, for three years. Uh, before that, uh, I was working actually for His Royal Highness, the, uh, the Prince of Wales. Uh, and in that role, uh, visited this part of the world on, on a couple of occasions and saw the, 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 the impact of that very important part of our relationship, our royal family's relationship with the royal families in this part of the Gulf. And it just opened my eyes a bit to the, to the, to the, to the importance of having multifaceted uh, uh, relationships. Uh, and again, this is, what we're now, this is what we're now seeing here, that, that uh, Amazon Web Services, with the cloud region that they are building here, have, um, have brought a, um, uh, a new dimension. <laughs> the flag and some the flies, here. Uh, um, to the Bahraini economy. So, so talk about the uh, multifaceted piece of it, mm. because what I'm no. fascinated by is the Dubai dynamic, right? You know, I, I see Dubai, a lot of events there, yeah. blockchain events, AI events, a lot of tech events. Feels like New York to me, using the American metaphor, and yeah. it's kind of like a, a Silicon Valley kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. um, but they all have been working together for years. What's the historical relationships? How have they changed? And how does cloud computing chain, make up for that? How does it play into it? Mm. Well, uh, of course, there's been uh, there's been a very uh, collaborative and, and and yet competitive relationship between the different, particularly the finance centers of the Gulf, uh, for many years. Uh, the, 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 the economic success story of, of, of Dubai is very well known. Uh, Bahrain has, has uh, continued to develop, but, but without the, uh, 
without the resources that underpin the UAE's success, uh, has done so on a more, more progressive way. Uh, but this is always going to be a much smaller economy, uh, and Bahrain has to, has to compete in, in niches in which it has a competitive advantage. Um, and uh, uh, it's this, what we have now happening here, uh, is creating a wonderful new niche uh, opportunity for, uh, for Bahrain. But of course, I don't think I'm letting out any secrets to say that each of the, of the, of the countries in the Gulf would love to have been hosting the, uh, the new cloud region. Yeah. Uh, so Bahrain had to try incredibly hard to, to present uh, a, uh, an environment in, in which to host this kind of, uh, this kind of uh, uh, investment which requires uh, regulation, yeah. uh, it, it requires openness and ease of doing business, and it also requires uh, a, uh, an openness to, to developing the, uh, uh, the, the, the labor force to, to support not only Amazon, but all of the, the train of, of, of companies that we're expecting yeah. to invest along behind it. Well, Simon, I really appreciate mm. your experience and uh, a candor here on theCUBE. Mm -hmm. Certainly for us, it's a new area, um, and you have certainly a perspective mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. royal family uh, in, mm -hmm. the U in the UK mm -hmm. and now being here. But one of the interesting things I'd like to get yeah. your perspective on is, you know, you look at globalization, and you look at regulations, you look at digital, things like GDPR, you see all traditional things. I mean, you go back when I was a young kid growing up, yeah, I remember the pound and the French franc and all the different currencies going on, and then and the EU comes together. Mm -hmm. And now you have Asia and cryptocurrency, so you have a whole nother cloud computing generation coming where that might reimagine the political landscape, might imagine the economic mm -hmm. relationships. These are opportunities, but also threats. And so, that, mm -hmm. so how people handle it is interesting. So how do you, when you look at that kind of dynamic, you got a little bit of uncertainty mm -hmm. and opportunity at the same time. Mm -hmm. Depending on how you look at it, it's glass half full or the half, glass half empty. Exactly. How should executives and government officials start thinking about this new model, this new marketplace? London, certainly the center of the action and, and connects now into Bahrain, could be a different dynamic, mm -hmm. frictionless, digital, mm -hmm. people living across borders. So these are new dynamics. What's your thoughts on this new melting pot of digital impact? Well, of course everybody wants a piece of it. Everybody wants to be at the center of the new melting pot. Uh, and for, for Bahrain, they're looking to be the center of it within, uh, within this region. But of course, the Dubai Finance Center and you know, Abu Dhabi and Kuwait and so on are also, are also very keen. Uh, and no one, no one is expecting to be, to be the, the, the dominant player. Uh, and certainly from Bahrain's perspective, it's very much about creating the environment in which companies will see this is a good place to start. Um, the, the, the Gulf region is, is, a, is a coherent region with a, an incipient single market and so on within the GCC. Uh, and so naturally, investors from the outside are going to look at one place to start. Uh, and so what Bahrain has done, and I think it's, uh, it's been very, very well founded, this has taken place over the three years that I've been here, is, is, is to dramatically increase the ease of doing business yeah. and then find uh, uh, proportionate ways in which the government can support uh, new companies to get them established. So uh, you mentioned GDPR, you know, how's this going to affect a company in the Gulf? Well, I was at the launch of a very interesting new uh, d uh, big data software project by one of the, in fact, British owned yes. new startups in the FinTech Bay uh, here, which is supported by the Economic Development Board. Their starting point is that the product that we are yeah. selling out of Bahrain is GDRP, GDPR compliant, uh, which gives you an idea of, uh, yeah. of the way in which even from, from this relatively small island in the Gulf, yeah. the, the, the global perspective is being taken. And certainly mm. with uh, you know, digital currency, the know your customer anti-money mm. laundering is a big thing too, yeah. you got to get that right. Absolutely. So they have an opportunity with FinTech. Final question for you, um, as you look out and see the human capital market and the future mm. of work yeah. is a big conversation we're always having. And certainly I live in Silicon Valley where everyone, it's no secret that there's migration out of Silicon Valley due to the prices of living there, but yet concentration of entrepreneurship. Mm. People are going to have engineering teams all over the world. So you have a dispersed workforce now yeah. crossing borders and not just a domicile issue, mm. that's one, 
you know, taxes, mm. um, where to domicile outside, say the US or, or other countries. So you have the combination of diverse workforces. Mm. This, is a big, this is a big opportunity too, challenge and it, opportunity. It is, it is. Um, uh, and of course there are, there, there are the, not just big changes now, there's constant fluctuation in the way uh, the workforce and the, uh, the populations uh, in this part of the world in, uh, within the Gulf are changing. Uh, look at Vision 2030 in Saudi Arabia, the big increase in, 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 in the, the Saudi workforce, both through the policy of Saudiization and through the, uh, the, the creation of many more opportunities for women in the workforce. That's affecting Bahrain. But Bahrain has always been a place where, where, where people come to to work and sometimes to work remotely, sometimes to live here and work across in Saudi Arabia. So the, 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 the Bahrainis feel that they're, they're very, uh, very attuned to, to these challenges. But I might just mention as well that, that this is not just about economics. Um, and what impresses me about the reform program you see going on here uh, is that the idea is that we will create a, a, a broader uh, and wider spread opportunity, particularly through the opportunities for young professionals working in, in AWS, but also in, in, the, in the environment all the way around it, for all communities in Bahrain. So not yeah. just the wealthy, not just the, uh, the, the sort of Ivy League equivalent uh, graduates. Yeah. Uh, and so that's why the, the academy that they're setting up here can... And the networks as they merge in, social networking is going to bring people closer together. Yeah. And okay, I, great to have you on. Um, final question is, as, as people look at this moment in time, mm. maybe an inflection point, her, shot heard around the Gulf, if you will, of Amazon, certainly they mm. did this with the CIA in our country. They said successes coming mm. in and, and kind of changing how things do, reimagining value creation and value yeah. capture. What do you see as the impact of the AWS region have in, the, in this area, in the geography? Just your thoughts on what the impact's going to be. Well, of course, this this is a this is this is a virtual world, and a, and a cloud region is a virtual concept. So it's easy to it's easy to, to say, well, it shouldn't take a, an Amazon Web Services cloud region to transform the way in which governments work here. In practice, uh, what AWS have seen wherever they have uh, established cloud regions, it's a magnet for for other businesses uh, to develop around it. And it's, it, it, it provides the, the reassurance that governments need to take that step forward. Uh, I don't know whether you heard Max Peterson in his, uh, in, in his presentation this morning saying he was amazed at the speed with which the entire Bahraini government system has yeah. embraced the move to the cloud, uh, which indeed my own government is doing uh, uh, as we speak. Um, uh, and this, I think, is going to be one of the really big, the really big uh, uh, impacts uh, which will allow governments to get smaller and uh, more efficient and more transparent. And serve their citizens in a different way, mm. in a better way. But one last thing, John, because you, you may not have heard about this, is uh, we're hearing a lot about the, 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 the shift towards renewable energy in this part of the world. And people say, why on earth would we need renewable energy, which is, you know, so much of the world's uh, uh, petrocarbon resources are based here, but of course, if you, don't, if you don't burn them, you can sell them. Uh, and that's, yeah. that's very simple economics. The fact is that it has taken longer than in other parts of the world for the transition to, to renewable energy, even though we have so much sunshine and at times quite a lot of wind. The government here has just put out a tender for a 100 megawatt solar farm. And the driving force behind that is because AWS have said, we want to power our cloud region from yeah. renewable energy. And this is an, an example of industry and the big investors actually applying a, a, a positive force to speed up the direction of government policy yeah. already. Uh, and it's something that has been well. And it's happened across. fast. This private partnership, public relationship, mm. that's yeah. a success story. Mm. And I think there are lots of other ways we will see this happening. As I, as I say, uh, you can't have over 2,000 people here all focusing on, on the, uh, on cloud technology without bringing an awful lot of extra uh, attention to and focus on what else is going on in Bahrain. Yeah. From my perspective, the Bahrain government is saying we welcome, yeah. we welcome this, uh, uh, this publicity and we look forward to explaining ourselves uh, and I think we'll see a lot of further development uh, in this, in well, this area. Well, that's a great point. Sustainable energy mm. and the 
the trade off between industry, private industry trying to make money, mm -hmm. but contributing technology in a co-creation with the government. Mm. Yeah. I mean, data center's hot here. You need cooling. You got sun, power, you got, so you have to have a solution. Absolutely, yeah. You can't burn it, you can sell it, so yeah. good opportunity. Yeah. Simon, Martin, ambassador, the British ambassador to the embassy here in Bahrain. Mm. Thank you for sharing your insights mm. and color commentary. Pleasure to meet Appreciate you, Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, live mm. coverage here. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE, bringing you all the new observations. Our first time in the Middle East region, well coherent structure, great economics, great society benefits, cloud computing, Amazon Web Services region opening up in 2019. Exclusive coverage, stay with us for more after this short break.